to the channel. Today I'm playing Storm Above the Rag, and uh, we're actually starting turn one here. So uh, as I go through, I'll explain some of my tactics or ideas and um, sort of uh, let you know on some of the rules that I'm aware of that I could share with you. Uh, before I start, I want to put my advantage, attack advantage counters over here. We always try to use these on all of our attacks, so we try to think of our attacks to work that way. So to start out, uh, we're going to move our mission turn up to one. And of course, our escorts arrive this turn, which we will deal with them in a minute. Okay, so our first move is to enter turn one. Now, um, we're allowed to put him in any of the low positions on turn one here. So I'm going to keep these guys together to create a swarm here. And I'm going to bring these guys in low position on the tail. These two here are going to go in low position on the nose so they'll crisscross each other. Now, it doesn't matter where you put them when you end up over at the escort here. You'll find that um, they'll, they can either come here, 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 or here in the positions that they're at right now. So uh, it's just a matter of dice roll of, you know, staying lucky and not getting uh, hit by the escorts right on turn one. But we'll see what happens. So we've made our move. Uh, we go to returns. That would be returns from the box. We don't have that. Now we go to the escorts, which is always the dreaded thing. Okay, so the first one I'll roll for is um, the forward section. If we go one and four, it goes above trailing. If we go eight to 10, it goes below, but a five to seven is nose level. So we're hoping they're not getting it. And we get an eight, which is below trailing. So this guy will come down here. Now we're gonna leave him right there because now we're gonna roll for the below trailing. So we don't wanna move the same guy twice because they have different numbers on the back uh, for different quantities of aircraft. So we wanna keep them in order. As a matter of fact, what I guess we could do is just put him on the bottom right there. So now I'm going to roll for below trailing. So on a two, it goes to uh, the forward station. Three to five, tail low. We don't want three to five. Six flank, seven flank, eight to ten above trailing. We don't like them when they're up here. They can really come out hard up this top one. So we're hoping that if anything, it goes to a forward station, which is number two. That would be nice. Or number one, exit would even be better. And it's a nine. Oh, it's a nine. So it goes to above trailing. So that means on the next turn, this guy is going to come out and he can go out to the box with the most fighter, the box with the least fighter, return box high, tail high, tail high, and then return box high. So, um, you know, the most advantageous spot you want to put your guys, they can go there. Box with the most fighter is six to 10. So one is a forward. So everything else, it, unless you roll a one here, Everything else comes out and hits you. Okay, so our next move is recovery, which we don't have any recovery. We have blast and flak, so we don't have any of that. An outbound mission, so there's no flak, and we don't have any um, type of equipment that would be fired during the blast and flak. So we go to cohesion. So what cohesion is, we roll for each one of these groups to see if they get messed up. Now, if we roll uh, the number or below, that means they degrade in their cohesion. If not, they increase in their cohesion. We'll go ahead and roll on these guys. And the first one is this group right up here. This has one, so we need a one to, for them to degrade. And we get a nine. Next group here is this one here. We need a one. And we get a nine again. So it's the number of counters that are in the group that you're counting, not these numbers here or this number here. So we have one counter here, so we need a nine also, or a nine, a one. Oh, of course we get a 10 that time. We don't even bother with a nine. And here we need a one again. We'll try that. And we do get a one right here. So the cohesion is loose. The element is loose. So what that means now is that this entire element right here is a minus one to all of these squares here, which helps us out up here. This fallen bomber is a minus one to the four squares that are around that bomber because it degrades the formation. This entire formation is loose, meaning they're flying at different levels or they're just not quite tight enough 
to spread the fire evenly around. So all of this formation right around here loses uh, one to the numbers here. So our next thing is attack. And we don't have any attacks because they just got in here. They need to be in these attack positions to go. So we don't have any of that. Okay, so because we don't have any attacks here, we're gonna go ahead and move our mission turn up to number two. All right, so now we're on turn number two. We're gonna go ahead and go to our moves. So I'm gonna bring these guys out, low nose approach and low tail approach. We don't have any returns. Now we gotta go over to the dreaded escorts. So the first one we'll roll is the most dangerous one here. So let's hope that it doesn't give us anything tough. We're looking for a one. And of course we get a 10, which is the box with the most fighters, which goes right here. Then we got to do the forward position, roll a die for that. And that gets a one. So that's above trailing station. So that one goes up here to the top also. And then we're going to roll for the below trailing. And that gets a three, which is tail low. So this comes into low. Okay, so I believe this fighter stays here and this fighter fights with them because it goes in that square. I don't believe you get two of them on top, but I could be wrong on that. So if I am, please let me know. But uh, these, this fighter here is gonna fight this stack here. So let me see how many fighters are involved. There's two Spitfires, so that's good. It's not all of them. So let me see, I want to use, I think, um, Doppler and Ifalot. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing the name. It might be just Vlad. But um, they're going to fight against the Spitfire here. So they're going to they're gonna do battle. And the reason I pick this guy right here is because he has the Wally um, advantage. So I want that. So we're going to go over here to our combat table. And we need to know two things. Fighters higher than escorts. No, they were not. More fighter than escorts? Well, no, I only have two fighting against them, so they're not here. So now we're gonna roll. And we get a five. So, uh, no, no, so that's D. So we have dogfight fighters and one escort marker to the dogfight. Okay, so we take them on over here to the dogfight. But because we have that Wily, when the aerial combat result forces the fighters to the dogfight box, Use the skill to either exit or move to any return box. The escort marker exits and the other fighter remains where they are. They do not go into the dogfight. So this fighter, actually we don't go in the dogfight. We remove this guy. He leaves, which that's a good, good thing that he, he did that. And this fighter uh, remains where it's at. And we can remove to any return box. So I'm gonna move him to the high return box here on the nose. All right, so that was, that was a, definitely a skill, a good skill to have on there. So we resolved that combat and that didn't hurt too badly, which is kind of nice. So uh, the next thing that we're gonna go is we're gonna move on down the line here. Next step is recover. We don't have anything to recover here. Blast and flak, we don't have any of that. We're going to do the cohesion check again. So this time we're going to look at this one. This one needs a one or less. And we're going to roll the die. And we have a five. So nothing happens here. We need a one or less here. And we do get a one. Believe it or not. That is unbelievable. I've never gotten that lucky. So this formation has now become loose. All right. So this, this formation right here. We need a one for that, and we get a five. In this formation here, we need two or less. And we get a two, so this element actually comes on over to kaput. So that's a minus two. So because this is a minus two for all these, guess where all of my fighters are gonna go? Right there. All right, so the next move is attack. So I bring my fighters out on attack. So all these guys are low, they're gonna come in and attack at the tail position here of uh yeah we'll go for this guy that already hit now nah, we'll go for this guy that has no damage matter of fact we can put 
we can put them in a couple couple different spots here so unfortunately because we don't have uh, space with um, attacking by four fighters it doesn't doesn't uh, help us here but I'm gonna put two in one spot and that's gonna give us a little benefit here let me just make sure I have the right two in that spot and that's gonna be flyer that's gonna be Doppler so I actually want Doppler to go in with Griswold here and Haas here and then these two guys are coming in from the nose and again they're low and they're gonna come in attacking the nose right at this direction here so there's gonna be two fighters do I want two fighters in there I don't think I do because that's cause for collision so we're gonna bring this fighter on over here all right so the attack we have our approach we we come in for our attack here none of them are coming from out of the Sun so we don't get any of that any of that advantage we do need to select the fighter mode so what I'm gonna do here is because we have 10 turns is I'm gonna flip all these guys over to elusive um, and theoretically that should it doesn't give you quite as good of a combat result but it also prevents them from getting hurt too much so we'll see, we'll see how that works on this first turn here all right so then now that we've done that we do a collision check so we have two of these here but the one guy has the flyer ability so the flyer ability when a fighter triggers a collision check during the attack phase draw two proximity markers so because he has the flyer and he's the only one with two in there we get to draw two of these proximity markers now what we do is we whoops wrong marker sorry about that as I'm showing you Paula. so we draw two of these proximity markers and we have a proximity two and a no impact so because this guy allows us to pick one we're going to pick the no impact so we're going to throw that one in there and then the no impact is going to stay in the square because this degrades this group on the next cohesion round now that we've done the collision we need to um, select maneuvers so these are the maneuvers that they're going to make after they do their attack so these two guys they're going to go to the high position after uh, they're going to climb after their attack both of them are going to climb and these guys are going to dive both of them are going to dive so what that means is that after they do their attack they're going to dive down they're going to go to a low position over here these guys are going to climb to the high position up here the high return box i should say so that's my idea afterwards all right so now that we've done that we start our attacks and here's where it gets interesting so before we start our attacks what we want to do is we want to check for any advantages so elements attacking from more than one altitude or position well they're more than one position but they're all at the same altitude so nothing there space with two or plus fighters so we do have that so we get the raw advantage and swarm is attacked by four fighters from coming from one um, area either coming from one box here or one box here so we don't have that so we can't do that on this particular one so we do get the one advantage right there and this is going to allow us to remove a damage if that should happen so i think the first we're going to do is we're going to have uh, this guy attack here so he's evasive so, so we come up here and we have a nose attack so we're going to draw, draw this nose card right here and we're going to flip it on over and so what we're looking at here is we have a nose attack and he's in number two here and he's not a high so doesn't get a plus so it's two position here but because we have this kaput it actually is a zero so when we look at the card we are attacking from low nose position right here uh, we're attacking in evasive here and that's going to be a hit it's going to move through the square once in other words it's going to pass the plane because it's coming towards the aircraft and that one's flying uh, we're flying towards us so we're going to pass it by one square and um, we're going to take a hit also unfortunately but that's what's going to happen here so I'm going to put this cup put right up here so it's out of the way so we're going to pass through we're going to go to this this square right here and he's still climbing um, he's going to take a hit so I'm going to pick out a hit marker here and I got a five on the rudder which that's not good so I got a five on the rudder there and um, then we're going to take out a hit for the bomber so this bomber here 
has a wing which is eight, and if we hit an eight, it falls out of the sky. So now we're gonna roll a die and see what we get for that. And we get a six. So a six is nothing, so all that happens is this flips over, and this bomber has four damage on the wing. When it comes to 10 damage, that means that this fighter will be shot down. Okay, so I zoomed in a little bit so you can see what happened here. So this fighter has four damage on it. And this guy has moved through to one space, and he has a rudder hit of five. So we'll, we'll take care of that in a little bit here. The next guy that we're going to have attack is this gentleman right here. And he's going to attack the nose of this aircraft. And again, it's a two square. But because we have the kaput here, it's a minus two on that, so it's zero. So again, we pull a nose attack card. Let's see if I can get that in here for you. And we're attacking the nose low uh, with evasive maneuver here. And that's at a zero, so there's nothing that happens except this guy flies through. So he comes on through, and we'll put him on over here, and he just flies right on by. So he fires at him, misses, goes completely by him. So the next guy we're going to have attack is we will have uh, this gentleman attack right here. And he's here where it's two. Again, that's zero. He's attacking from the tail. So this time we draw a tail card like that. And we flip it on over and we're at zero, low, evasive, and we get a hit. So that's good and we don't fly through them. So generally the uh, cards that have are coming from the tail, you're going about the same speed, so you generally don't fly past the aircraft. So we get a hit there, so that's good. So I'm gonna pick out a chet here, and so we have a 10 on the fuselage. So we gotta roll and see if we get a 10 here. So we're gonna roll, and we get a 10! A 10, that means that this guy was just shot out of the sky. So we take and um, drop him down. So he's destroyed. Haas here gets an experience point right here. So we go down the experience to Haas and we give him one experience point because he downed that aircraft. He actually gets two for downing an aircraft and the group will also get a point for that too. So that's looking really good right now. That's that's excellent job there. So he's diving. So we'll just turn him a little bit there so that we know that we've shot with him. So the next guy we're going to have attack is this one right here, and this is Griswold. Now, really, I should have... I can uh, flip Griswold either way, so I really didn't have to make this maneuver, but I did anyway, so we're going to live with it. So Griswold's going to fire, and... Um, Let's, let's see what he gets here. So he's tail low, and again, it's two. So that's gonna be a zero. So we're gonna go a zero, tail low, and that's another hit right there on the evasive. So that's working out pretty darn good for us right now. So let's see what we have here. And we have a 10 on the wing. So we have to roll a 10 and this will drop out of formation. So let's see, let's see if we can keep this streak going. Toss it on through. Oh, now see, so you guys are going to start thinking I'm cheating now, but I'm really not. I actually rolled another 10 there. So this guy now falls out of formation. It's a fallen bomber. And come on over here to our, our formation and EP there, and Griswold is going to get an experience point. So this turned out to be one of the best rounds I think I've ever had as far as experience points go. So that's getting rather uh, amazing, to be honest with you. You've, it never happens this way. I just want you guys to know this is very unusual. All the games that I've played here, I've never managed to hit so much, but I've never used the elusive. So the next one we're having is Doppler, and he has the flyer skill, but that's not going to be effective here. So again, he's zero, attacking at the tail. So we're going to get our tail attack again. Put these back in the right spot here, discarding the wrong spot. So we're gonna go tail to zero, and oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna fly this all the time. So the tail gets a hit, and then we get an R. So hold on one sec, I haven't had an R yet, so let me look up an R. Okay, so we have an R here, 
and that's called riding the tail. After applying all of the results of the attack, the fighter must either attack again immediately or drop back to the, pay, the tail position. Attacking again, draw another attack card and apply the result. If one of the results is riding the tail, the fighter may yet attack again. So he can attack again, but this bomber has already fallen, so we're not going to be able to do any damage to it. So it doesn't make much sense. So he can draw back, um, draw back to the tail position, place the fighter in a level box of the tail position. Doing this allows the fighter to skip continuous fire. So that's, oh man. See, that'd be worth it, except the tail position, uh, the level tail position, when we put him back up there, he's going to be right next to an escort. So I'm going to go ahead and let him fire away again, I think. And let's, let's hope that we get um, less than a damage result. So again, we're at tail. We're going to have him fire again. And he gets another shot there. Man, this is the way to go. He gets another shot. I think I found the secret, guys, to... Uh, to doing good with this game so he gets he gets another hit and uh but that doesn't do anything so that's just ignored so that's ignored so that's that's probably the best that we could we could hope for there all right so now what we have to do is we have to pull for continuous fire afterwards so once once we're done the damage is tabulated we we scored up everybody um and we still got this to use to remove a damage. So, but we, we could end up with some quite a bit of damage from the continuous fire. But let's let's see what happens here. But this is where the evasive really works out on the continuous fire because uh, this this can help you um, get away with a, from a lot of damage here. Okay, so so as we break away, we're going to get continuous fire. So we'll start with this guy right here. He is diving. So we pull. A continuous fire card for him and again we have zero and evasive so that's nothing so he doesn't have anything but it says debris roll a die even if um, roll a die if even place a damage marker on the nearest bomber if Oz the fighter is hit draw a hit marker card all right so so we're gonna roll a die and see if we get an even result and we rolled another 10. I'll tell you, those red dies are the best. So it's even, so uh, we actually place a damage on the nearest bomber, which is this one, but he's destroyed already, so it's a moot point. So we're just going to go ahead and take him, and we're going to put him on over to the low area here, over to low return. And I'll show you that in a minute here, once we're done with the continuous fire. So uh, we're going to do the continuous fire on this guy, and he's in minus two, three, four, so he's in a zero square here also. So we're pulling a continuous fire for him. Zero. Oh, he gets a hit. And confused. So let me see. Is this guy a regular guy? Hunger. So yeah, Unger is... Uh, if green pilot, after resolving continuous fire, uh, spend one uh, tactical point, if there is no TP to spend, the fighter is hit. So he is a green pilot, or at least he doesn't have any skills like the other pilots. So I'm going to have to spend a tactical point. So my tactical points now come down to one here. Okay, so then he's going to go, he's going to be diving. Oh no, he's climbing and he's coming back this way. So he comes up to the elusive evasive return and I got to remember everybody has to go to the evasive return except the two guys that have quick which is Haas he doesn't have to go to the evasive because he can flip on over and Griswold's the other one he doesn't have to be evasive okay so next guy we'll do is we'll do this this guy here and he's in the evasive and he's climbing and again he's in a two which is zero so we're going to draw a continuous fire card zero nothing determined mode only we're not we're in invasive so we don't have to worry about it so this guy just climbs up to the return in the invasive continuous fire on this gentleman right here and again he is at a zero and a zero is nothing but oh he's diving so that doesn't matter so he's diving without the sun and everything so it doesn't matter he goes to the evasive now is that that's doppler 
and Doppler just has the flyer. So yes, he's gonna to go to the evasive return. And our last guy to draw for, and again, we have a zero, which is nothing, but it says bounced. After continuous fire, if diving or dive rolling, if an escort marker is in the below trailing station, which it is, it attacks this fighter afterwards. If not, exit, um, if not, exiting or dogfighting fighter breaks away to the tail. Okay, so, so we have to dogfight a guy that is over here in the trailing position here. So let me, let me read this to make sure I got it right. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to bring out the guy that was in, he's in the trailing position here. He's one of the fighters in the trailing position. And he is going to be two against one. So again, we're going to have to do combat and see if we can survive this combat, which uh, we may not be able to. Let's, let's see. Okay, so we got an F-190. Are the fighters higher than escort? No. More fighters? No. So we're rolling on this bottom line right here for the Spitfires. So let's see what we get. We get a five. So we go down to the bottom of the spot there and we got a D result. So a D result is dogfight, fighter and escort marker dogfights. So what's gonna happen there is that both the fighter and the two Spitfires go in this dogfight and they will fight the next time on the escort and see what happens. See if either one of them survive or if they both get killed or have to leave the game. So that's, that's not a result that we want, but, but the results were so great over here that I don't know that I can complain. We basically took out two fighters out of this group here and I never did use this advantage, which means I lose it. So I should have used it on the one fighter that had damage. I should have used it right away. I think you have to use these right away. So I was correct. This should have been used either during the um, attack, the burst, or the breakaway. So when I took the fighter up here to the top uh, during the breakaway, I should have removed that damage then, but I didn't. So it's too late now. So this goes away. This goes back here. So the advantage that I had was just wasted. So after that very successful turn, I now move on to the next turn, which that was a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff done here. Um, in one turn to this group down here. This, this fighter group down here is pretty much kaput, as it says right there. So the next thing is we're gonna move on to turn number two. That ends turn number one, and I did got a really good job uh, here. I don't like this guy being up here, that's not good, and these guys have a couple turns before they get back into the fray. But, um, and we do have a escort there, which I don't like, but right now, Everything's looking good. This whole group down here is destroyed. So that's the end of turn one because I explained so much of it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and we'll pick it up in the next video on turn number two of the 1943 early campaign. Still mission one, but it took a lot of time. So hopefully the next time I'll go through it much quicker without explaining so much to you and we'll get everything done a lot faster. Thanks for watching. Please. Subscribe and like and tune in next time to see how this all ends. After a tremendous first turn, I'm hoping it's going to be good, but I could be wrong. Take care.